Mr. Andrew Bridgen. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to prohibit Ministers of the Crown from making or implementing any legal instrument which is not consistent with the sovereignty of the United Kingdom Parliament unless it has been approved by a referendum and for connected purposes. Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, this is a bill that does what it says on the tin. The point of this bill is to uphold the integrity and sovereignty of this great house and this great nation. This bill would prevent, for example, a future government overturning the democratic will of the British people and taking us back into the European Union without holding public consultation and a referendum. Indeed, it would stop the government from taking us into any union without public consent and it will move power closer to the people. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill would also stop something which threatens the people of our great nation now, right now. It would stop the government from blindly accepting the World Health Organization's amendments to the International Health Regulations and the so-called post-pandemic agreement, something they appear intent on doing without even consulting this House, let alone the public. The government signed up to the WHO Pandemic Preparedness Treaty negotiations without a single word being uttered in government time. The only time we've ever mentioned this in Parliament was on the 17th of April this year and this debate in Westminster Hall was forced by over 156,000 members of the public through a petition. A further petition to reject the amendments to the IHR has closed, uh, reaching over 116,000 signatures but no time yet has been allocated for the debate. These two instruments, if followed, will control how future governments can prepare and respond to emergencies. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, in my view, it would amount to making this House redundant. This treaty and the amendments to the IHR, if allowed to progress, will fundamentally change the relationship between citizen and state, moving away from a parliamentary democracy that's been the envy of the world for centuries to an autocratic dictatorship led by an unelected, unaccountable Director General of the WHO. The same organisation that's been accused of undue Chinese influence as well as severely mismanaging and covering up the spread and origin of COVID-19. The same organisation which is mostly funded by commercial and private interests and has diplomatic immunity for its employees and their families. What could possibly go wrong, Madam Deputy Speaker? My constituents in North West Leicestershire voted to leave the European Union in 2016. Indeed, I campaigned for that too. But my, what my constituents didn't vote for in tens of thousands was to leave the EU, only to be subject to an even more autocratic and unaccountable body which takes away sovereignty from this House and from our people. We voted to leave the European Union to take back control, not to give it away to the WHO or anybody else. We're all elected by our constituents to represent them and speak on their behalf. So when it comes to matters of their sovereignty, and to protect their freedoms and rights, surely it's our responsibility to defend those rights and privileges. We're all only custodians of power and sovereignty for a brief period of time, after which it must be returned to the people intact at the next election so they can again decide who they wish to re represent them at the, for the next parliamentary period. And when it comes to sovereignty, giving sovereignty away, it always has to go back to the people and it requires a referendum. So the people should decide whether they wish to give their sovereignty away, and in this case whether they want the Director General of the WHO controlling their life, not the government of the day. And to give those powers away uh, would be nothing short of a dereliction of our duties. The WHO would like to paint the picture of this treaty and the amendments being all about nation states working together in harmony to fight deadly pathogens, when in fact it's a huge power grab by an unelected, unaccountable elite. They don't want to debate on this, Madam Deputy Speaker. They would quite happily see this pass through by the back door without a word being mentioned. And that is not my idea of open uh, parliamentary democracy. The, the Director General of the WHO will have the ability to call a public health emergency of international concern, abbreviated to a fake, Madam Deputy Speaker. He would take absolute control of the lives of all citizens of, of our sovereign nation. This is a power grab, not just of this nation, but all nations around the globe who sign up. Such new powers, which the WHO will gain, will include freedom to declare a pandemic, or even a potential for a pandemic, at which point all decision-making powers will fall under the control of the WHO. It would also include the ability to call an emergency due to 
human pathogens, animal pathogens, or a perceived environmental threat, or even the risk, the perceived risk of any of the above. The freedom to impose lockdown restrictions on all individuals in member states and to make vaccinations or other medications mandatory. Such vaccines were made in 100 days, <coughs> skipping human trials and shaving safety and efficacy testing down to the bare bones. Furthermore, it would cede power for the right to specify the use of certain medications in medical emergencies and ban others, to decide the health care for every person, uh, with local doctors being forced to follow WHO edicts. The obligation to carry uh, a global health passport would be given over to these unelected bureaucrats in Geneva. Nations would be required to surveil and censor the press and social media so that no dissenting voices can be heard and the removal of the clause regarding human rights is, uh, is unforgivable. The recommendations which the WHO issued during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic were exactly that, recommendations. They were advisory and up to the sovereign governments and sovereign parliaments to implement them or ignore them as Sweden vaguely, uh, bravely and successfully chose to ignore them. This treaty would make the WHO's recommendations mandatory without a debate in this House or indeed any other elected chamber of nations which signs up to these flawed agreements. As George Santanea said, those who fail to learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. I have some severe worries that the lessons of the last pandemic have not been learned by the WHO itself as they will not even have a review of their recommendations during the last pandemic, so sure are they that their advice was absolutely perfect, when in fact we know from independently conducted reviews it was actually a litany of disasters, lockdowns, mandatory experimental vaccines and masks, all of which caused our population and economy huge harm. We're in danger of giving this organisation even more powers to overreach itself and repeat those catastrophic mistakes. Madam Deputy Speaker, do we, do we really want to repeat of the measures recommended by the WHO who resulted in 400 billion on the national debt which has caused ravaging inflation, not to mention the huge NHS waiting lists, one million young people in need of mental health support and the damage to our children's education and development? So that begs the question, why on earth would anyone want, would be willing to give away our sovereignty without consulting this House or the people? That is something which I'm not content with and I suspect many colleagues here today would share my concerns. Well, perhaps some of them think that, uh, rather like those who were deciding the uh, regulations at the last pandemic, that uh, they wouldn't apply to them. I can assure honourable and right honourable members uh, that they will. The very democracy that we've taken for granted all our lives is now under threat and it's not under threat from invading armies, hailing up on from hostile nations. No, our democracy is under threat due to the apparent corruption and decay of our own government institutions which are allowing this power grab to happen. Honourable and right honourable members in this chamber should never forget that we are the servants of the people. We're, we're not their masters and the, the servants should not sell out their masters ever. In my opinion, anyone who supports any one of these WHO instruments, either of them, which I refuse to call, one of them I refuse to call an agreement because I have not agreed, and the people of North West Leicestershire have not agreed. Indeed, I think the majority of my constituents would never agree to these instruments. In my view, any member of this Parliament who would hand over these powers to such a discredited organisation as the WHO does not deserve a seat in this chamber or any elected assembly around the world. So in conclusion, Madam Deputy Speaker, to even contemplate giving away these sort of powers to this sort of body, which affects not just the democratic rights, but indeed the human rights of every single man, woman and child in our nation without a referendum will be quite simply catastrophic. People have said this will lead to one world government, but in fact it's rather worse, it would be a one world dictatorship. Signing up to this treaty and binding ourselves with the WHO without a single debate on it, a single vote on it, or asking the general public what they think, would make being a member of the European Union look like a democratic paradise by comparison. That's why we need this bill. And I'm aware, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the looming prospect of prorogation, even if the House supports my motion today, the bill will fall in a few days' time. However, Madam Deputy Speaker, as the phrase goes, I will be back. I will be back. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill as may as that opinion say aye. Aye. On the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Mr Philip Hollobone, myself and others, Madam Deputy Speaker.
Andrew Bridgen. Parliamentary Sovereignty Referendums Bill. Second reading, what day? Friday the 24th of November, Madam Deputy Speaker. Friday the 24th of November. Thank you.